Arsenal, Liverpool, and Manchester City. One of these three teams is winning the league. You heard it here first. Don't think I don't think that's rocket science to say. But who will it be and why? Uh, we'll look at each team and look at the pros and cons. Let's start with, who would you say the favourites are? Man City. Arsenal. Let's start with Arsenal. Mm. Um, why do you think Arsenal are favourites? I think it's a building block. It's, it, Arsenal, it seems like this is a crescendo of what, what they've been building. Obviously, last year took people by surprise and a lot of people think that they bottled it or threw it away. But if you ask Arsenal fans at the beginning of the season, would you take finishing second? They would just snatch your hands off. But I feel like this Arsenal team are at this position right now where... They've got a settled team. They've got solidity. They brought in a hundred million pound man that fit. And if you think about the history of the Premier League in terms of hundred million pound signings, how many of them have worked? Mm. Probably only Declan Rice. And that's because they knew what they wanted. And it's a similar yeah, signing. Jack <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, a, he's a complimentary piece. But like, if you look at Declan Rice, he's, a, he's integral to what. Arsenal do and if you see what Liverpool did when they brought in Van Dijk and Allison, they knew what they needed to go and win the biggest trophies I think that's what Arsenal have done and like I said before they can you can name Arsenal's best 11 which I think is important for title winning teams when you name legendary title winning teams you know 1 to 11 who's going to be starting and you know that with Arsenal the one issue that they have is they haven't got that X factor goal scorer that will get you a goal out of nowhere Saka's maybe building towards that but they haven't got that striker that that Liverpool have got or that City have got that can go and get them 30 Premier League goals. They just haven't got that. So it's goals by committee, which might hold them back a little bit. But in terms of a team building and going in the right direction, I think Arsenal just are the slight favourites over Liverpool and City. I like Arsenal. You know, I like Arsenal. I think they're a good team. I still just think there's um, maybe a little more pieces that they that they need to go and win the title. Now, if they go and win it, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh my God, this is un incredible. But I just still got to go with Manchester City simply because, as I mentioned, they've been there, they've done it. And you look at the cores in the, in the Premier League, you look at Arsenal's core, I still think there's an issue with Raya over there. You know, I'm a big fan of the Saliba, Gabriel and um, Rice trio. But then in front of it, Odegaard's not really firing at the moment. And then you have Gabriel Jesus, which is he going to lead you to the title? I'm not too sure. When you look at Manchester City's core, Edison, Ruben Diaz and John Stones, let's just say, Rodri, Kevin De Bruyne when he's back and Haaland. That's elite. That is elite footballers. Like, I just named six elite footballers. You know what I mean? So that's why I still think Manchester City are, are, are the favourites. We've seen them do it. We've seen them, you know, be down and out and, and pick up form. And it's, it's, it's literally become Premier League folk, folklore. Like Manchester City are going to win 10 in a row. Yeah. We, know, we, we know that Manchester City are going to win a 10 in a row. And, and every single season we look at it and like, no, but this is the difference in their team. This, no, this is the difference. Ha oh, Haaland wasn't um, adapting and blah, blah, blah. And in the end, it's like, oh, Man City have won it again. So yeah. I'm still going to go for City. I do feel like Pep gets bored. Mm. So like this season, he's gone, let's bring <coughs> Jeremy Docker in. And we were all chatting about, hold on, they went from, we want uh, possession-based wingers to now explosive wingers. Mm. Now he's going, oh, Grealish, actually, I kind of like you again. Like, mm. you have a bit of time in the team. He's gone, I don't really like Calvin Phillips anymore. Bring me someone else. He's still got Matthias Nunes and Kovacic yeah. just hanging around. Alvarez is a 10. Honestly, I just think Pep gets to the end of the season and goes, I can win this league with my eyes closed. Yeah. And I'm going to win it with my eyes closed. So I'm going to tinker. One team we didn't mention, Liverpool. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, why did we not mention Liverpool? Let's, let's get some clarification on this first. I, I genuinely think Liverpool are being underrated. You know, I think people think Arsenal... Clearly. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I, mean, no way. I think people think Arsenal are on another level to Liverpool. I, I don't think so. I think Arsenal... I still have City as the, as the best. And I think Arsenal and Liverpool are at a similar level. You know, City... I mean, sorry, Liverpool, I know they give away a lot of chances, but they also create a lot of chances. I think they're top of the XG table, but then it's kind of lower down when it comes to conceding chances. So, look, Liverpool at the moment, it's looking a bit rocky because they keep coming back. But I do think, and Liverpool are the one team that have shown they will dip into the January market yeah. out of any of the other teams. Liverpool are the ones that every single season, there's always something that they do in January market. And I don't think Klopp is going to see He's going to look around, I think, and say, see himself and be like, I didn't expect to even be here this season. It, what? We can win the Premier League? Let me go get a, a DM. Imagine if Liverpool go and get a Jao Paina that they're linked with. If Liverpool... Now, listen, I just said Man City win the league. Yeah. If Liverpool get Jao Paina, yeah, they win yeah, the league. That's correct. And, and the, the thing about Liverpool is that they've got players who've got a taste of it and know what it's like to win these biggest trophies. And when you've got that experience, it's invaluable. And that's what Arsenal don't have. But I will say that Arsenal also showing that they're not too scared to go into the transfer market to get players that know the Premier League if you see Trossard and Jorginho in last January. So I think that Arsenal probably could go again to try and find another right winger to back up Saka because he plays too many minutes. Yeah. But you went through that Man City team and I want to talk about Man City. I know we've talked about them so much, but 
You talk about Edison. Some Man City fans will tell you there's a problem with Edison this season. Talk about Stones, mm. who hasn't been there, and yeah. obviously Diaz is great. Talk about KDB, who hasn't been there. Mm. You talk about Harlem, who's missing chances. And so I think this Man City team is a little bit more fallible. And my issue is, and the reason why I say Arsenal is more for hope of the meritocracy of the Premier League, because it's an indictment on everybody else if yeah. they let City win it again this year when they're going through those problems. Mm. Because if City win it this year, then nobody's ever going to win it again. Don't worry, everyone's going to get their trophies back soon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give me my two that we need. <laughs> um, we're obviously not talking about <laughs> for real. Uh, obviously not talking about Manchester United mm-hmm. in this uh, oh. title race. Um, <laughs> just very quickly, do you think there's an outsider? Uh, I think Unai Emery said that if mm. Aston Villa were to beat Arsenal, mm-hmm. they'd become title contenders. They're beating Arsenal and Man City back to back. They're yep. third in the league, two points off the top. We've just said Man City aren't right. Mm-hmm. We're also saying Arsenal and Liverpool have holes as well. Yeah. Could this be one of those seasons? Wow. I mean, if that was the case, that would be in. Incredible. I mean, and it's, it's hilarious because when Leicester won the league, they had the same points as Aston Villa yeah. right now. Yeah, I think yeah. Aston Villa even had better goal difference potentially, or maybe it was Leicester. I'm not too sure, but they had the same points as Leicester. So if anyone's trying to be romantic and stuff like that, Aston Villa is the one. I know who I'm supporting in this title race, yeah. and it's Aston Villa. Yeah, you know what I mean? It's, I'm, right now, I'm a United fan watching my cultural <laughs> rivals in Arsenal try and win it, my historic rivals in Liverpool try and win it, and the neighbours in Man City is absolutely mad. So Aston Villa. Please give me something. But we, and you, you're big on <laughs> you're big on Man United, the Chelsea fans, man. We're in the mud. But you talk about spines. I'm enjoying this. I can't lie. <laughs> Go through Villa spine. Martinez. You say probably top three keeper in the league. Yeah, top five at least. Loves a big game. Um, you talk mm-hmm. about midfielders. Luis, top five ten midfielders in the league. I don't know about that. But uh, uh, DMs good. in terms of his yeah, position. Okay, yes. Ollie Watkins, I know there's not that many yeah, top yeah. strikers in the league, top five striker in the league. And so you talk about spines and you talk about the pieces around it as well. It feels disrespectful to leave Villa out of this because we've only seen this once in the history of the Premier League and that's when Leicester won in 2016. But they've beaten Man City and they've mm. beaten Arsenal and, and going to Villa Park is no easy day. Um, and so if they can stay within touching distance, say come February and March, so we can have a real conversation but they're still in Europe and we know how much Unai Red Emery loves European competitions. They might sacrifice the league a little bit to win that competition. And the thing with, with Villa as well is that, look, they're actually perfect at home. 15 mm. in a row, they're perfect. Can you maintain perfection? Because their away from home record isn't the greatest. So basically we're saying the reason why they're here is because they are perfect at home. That's a higher expectation. If, okay, they had won 10 in 15 home games then and they're here, maybe you could start looking at it like that. But, I mean, 15 and 15 is hard um, expectation to, to keep up to. In all fairness, away from home, they've only lost three this season. Newcastle, Liverpool and Forest. So two of them, Tough three teams, are yeah. horrible away yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, um, Villa fans... It was not in the script to mention you, <laughs> but do you think you can win the league? If you do think you can win the league, get in the comments. <laughs>